Oh, good evening guys. Uh, welcome to um, to Durban. Um, we've had a bit of a mixed day today. A bit of rain, bit of sunshine, bit of overcast. It's been a bit of a licorice all sorts day. Um, guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, there's, just, there's just something that um, I feel the Lord has put on my heart um, over the last couple of, couple of weeks. Um, and I think it's I think he wants me to share it with all of you, um, so I won't keep you too long. Um, and actually, um, to, just to get to the the the, the um, title of my message, um, I actually had it as "Rich in Mercy," but then I went over the message um, with my wife, and because um, I go, I, I share all my messages with her first before I go live. Um, just to make sure that I'm um, within the context of of the Bible um, and that I'm not I'm not uh, saying anything um, that is not in the Bible. Okay, so she 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 does check it for me, um, and she came up with the with the with the mess with the title of my message, um, which I really which I really th thought fit fits this message. Um, so let's let's dive straight into it. Um, I'm talking too much now. Um, so the title of my message is "Undeserved Gift of God." Okay, Ephesians two verse four to five says this. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. So the beginning of this passage uh, of scripture, verses 1 to 3, uh, Paul talks about how before we were saved, um, we were dead in our transgressions, dead in our sin, um, following the patterns of this world, right? Um, and the passion of our flesh. Um, so Paul is telling us the condition of our hearts and the conditions of our minds um, before we are or were saved. Um, and the difference between our old selves and non-believers and our new selves or born-again believers um, is God. Simple, it's God. That's the difference. Paul does not say, but we did. He only refers to the power of God. And we said, but because of His great love for us. All right? So two reasons are given for God's change in our lives. First... Paul mentioned God's mercy. Um, God is associated with mercy throughout throughout Scripture, um, particularly in Romans, um, in which Paul offers his most ex extensive teachings um, on salvation. Right, and secondly, Paul mentions God's great love for us. God is love. In John one, uh, one sorry, one John four verse says verse eight. Sorry, let me just say that again. First John four verse eight says this. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Right? Pretty simple. God is love. Right? And God expresses his love to us by saving people from sin. Right? Not condemning people, saving people from sin. Romans eight, uh, sorry, Romans five verse eight says this. But God shows his love to us in that while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. It doesn't say only after we, were, we, we, we try to be perfect. It said while we were still sinners, while we were still enemies of, basically while we were still enemies of God, Christ died for us. The difference between our unsaved and saved condition is clearly not based on human effort, but it's based on the mercy and the love God has for us. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 says this. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. Not a result of works. So that no one may boast. Right? Another aspect of God's mercy is that he is very patient with us. If God handed out justice immediately upon our first sin none of us will actually make it past our toddler years but instead 
the holy and righteous God chooses to hold off pronouncing judgment to a later time for his for basically for 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 the time of of Jesus' return. That's when he will he will hand out judgment, and he's a true he's a he's a, he's a just God, but. He's held off until the time of his return, but for the time of Jesus' return. That's that, but that's the love God has for us is to give us a chance to experience His mercy, repent of our sins, and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mercy triumphs over justice, and is a free gift to whoever chooses to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is good news, guys, that whoever wants this gift that God freely gives, we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God's mercy cannot be bought, and it cannot be earned by our own works. And God is not only rich in mercy, but His love for us is great. To see the greatness of God's love, we only need to look at the cross. The cross is probably the most, um, uh, uh, the most known for expressing God's love towards us. He sent His only Son, one and only Son, to become sin in our place. And as John 3 verse 16, it says this, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus bore our sins. Jesus was the sinless Son of God, who paid the debt that we could never pay. Jesus bore our sins on himself and he went willingly to the cross so that we may receive the undeserved gift of forgiveness, grace and mercy. Isn't that, isn't that, that's good news. That's, that, that, there's hope right there in the cross of Jesus at the cross when he died for our sins. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 it says this, he made the one, Jesus, who did not know sin, to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. As Jesus shed His blood for us, His blood covers all sin, and God sees us as righteous. Isn't that, that, that there is also hope, there is comfort. Because no matter what I've done in my past, no matter how bad I've been or what I've done or how far I've been away from God, when I give my life back to Jesus and I say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior, Jesus' blood covers our sin and God sees us as righteous. And it's because of God's rich mercy and great love, he extends grace rather than justice. And if mercy is God's is God not giving us the punishment we deserve, then grace is God giving us the blessings that we don't deserve. Instead of justice, God extends his favor towards us when we choose to accept his free gift of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. It is only by His grace that we receive the blessing of salvation and eternal life. Again, it is impossible. It is impossible to earn it. It isn't. Um, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and if we should, if I should, if I should give you a gift, and you want to pay me, pay me back for it, or um, you want to work for me. Um, for its value of, 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 of the gift. It ceases to be a gift. And if you refuse or reject the gift, 
it ceases to be a gift. Um, it is only a gift if you reach out and accept it. Jesus already paid the price for the gift of salvation, the gift of mercy, and the gift of grace. With his love, with his blood, with his stripes. Once we accept the gift of salvation, our sin debt is marked, paid in full. Isn't that good news? That's awesome. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited with this message. It's, this, this message has given me a new revelation on God's love, mercy and grace for me. Not only the world. Make it personal. Make it for me. That's, that's all he did. He did this for me. The very blood that Jesus shed on the cross in our place. The grace God offers is the unmerited gift of eternal life. And when we accept God's generous and loving offer of mercy and grace, He makes us alive together in Christ and gives us abundant and eternal life. Instead of being spiritually dead in our sins, God's grace, God's mercy, God's love makes us a new creation that is now spiritually alive in Christ. And the entire process of salvation, mercy and grace is an act of God's goodness and only by his unmerited favor and only for his glory. And when we truly see ourselves as sinners in desperate need of a savior and the grace and the love that God has for us, despite our sinful nature, we must then choose to accept or reject his gift of salvation. And if we accept it by faith, it leads to eternal life in heaven with Christ. But rejecting it leads, the, leads to the justice we deserve, which is eternal separation from God. So in closing, I want to encourage you to return to the Lord if you have strayed. If you have strayed, it's not a it's not like you you're lost forever. No matter how many steps you've taken away from the Lord, to return to Him takes one or two steps. Repent and ask for forgiveness, and He will forgive you your sins. Or if you don't know Jesus, or if you're not quite sure, have a bit of doubt, or not quite sure if you should take that leap, accept the gift of salvation, mercy and grace, through the confession and faith that Jesus died on the cross for you, and that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. It'll be the best decision of your life to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I want to leave you with one last verse. It's Psalm 51, verse 1 to 2. It's actually calling out to God. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Guys, have a blessed evening. If you have missed a message, um, I will be putting the recording on my YouTube channel. You can just search for my name, Quentin Linford. Um, yeah, guys, have a blessed evening. Um, and I encourage you, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He will give you the peace.
He will give you the strength. He will give you the comfort. He will give you the joy to be able to endure life, to endure, endure the hardships. And he gives you the hope that, it, that it's okay and everything's going to be okay. Have a blessed evening. Cheers. Bye.